Nice. So welcome to the Rise of the Super Being podcast. I'm Vanderson Pires, your host, our producer is Callan Walker. And today we have our guest, Ben Warren. I'm super excited to talk with Ben about so many things. We, you know, it's, we are lucky to, le- to have him here today with us. So before we get into, uh, just would like to share uh, something we posted this week on our Facebook page. So my wife showed me this, this graph, and the title of the graph was, What I Thought Would Make Me Productive hard work. <laughs> so we share that on the, on our Facebook page. So if you want, if you do like to check this graph, it's really interesting. It's uh, um, so check it out in combat room, Jiu Jitsu. Um, the artist was Liz and the Molly. So it was really interesting to see was this graph. It's hard work and what actually hard work means. So it's a combination of, so you divide that circle in uh, hard work. Um, you know, it's a small portion. Time off, it's another another portion, right? Exercise, it's another portion of that. Uh, healthy eating, it's another portion. And sleeping, another portion of that. So it's very important. I think we are now having more awareness to this idea of, uh, you know, so before hard work is to be just, you know, work, 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 uh, no rest. Uh, and the amount of stress this has been creating all of us, it's, it's massive. So to see the response of everybody online, not only on our Facebook page, but that after, you know, I saw in other people's uh, news feed as well, sharing that, uh, that graph. So that means a lot. I think that brings more awareness to what actually hard work means and the idea of being busy and being productive. It's two different things. So you can be busy by doing nothing, but you can be productive by doing nothing as well. So you know, it's really cool to discuss and to talk more about those things and to bring a little bit more more awareness to, to that. So yes, and this, this whole idea of hard work, healthy eating, it's a massive thing. So Ben, thank you so much for, Anderson, for your time. Thanks it's, for having me, man. <laughs> it's a, such a pleasure to have you here. You know, we've been talking f- for a while now. Yeah. To, you know, to organize. You're such a busy man, and we finally got this time to get together. And yeah, yeah thank you so much, man. And, thank and, you for having me. I mean, uh, yeah, I uh, it's a great honor. I, I was just saying, and I was happy to say on, online that you know I, I'm love, I'm a huge fan of your podcast some you know some of the people you've had on uh, I can't ever say the monk's name but uh, you know like uh, dedicating his life to yeah. finding happiness mm-hmm. I was actually just telling you driver as I came here around you know, how that you know how he's dedicated his life to finding yes. happiness and he found that you know sex yeah, yeah. and drugs didn't do it for him well they did it for a little while mm-hmm. and, and and then and then they obviously end up at meditation and becoming a Buddhist monk for 25 odd years yeah well, it's such an amazing cool. story yeah amazing. so and then Paul Word obviously uh, unbelievable uh, I've had the pleasure of hearing Paul talk, and then Dr. Ian with the end of life specialist. So I'm, I'm putting these in because if if people are listening to my one to listen to me, go listen to them because they're, <laughs> they're incredible. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, Ian, Ian, I actually know Ian's wife, and oh. and so yeah, and so when I heard Ian talk, I didn't know it was Ian's wife, uh, and and so when I uh, I'm like, my gosh, end of life specialist. I mean, you know, when you start, in, you know, for me, that's about how I look at what he does, right? Is, mm-hmm. uh, is this transition specialist? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, we, we don't tend to think of death too much in in the in the modern Western world. Mm. And uh, I think there's a lot to be learned from from that, right? Yeah, yeah. Such a yeah, a great man. You know, he, he take a, a special type of people to do the the work. Oh, he, he so compassionate, doing. eh? Yeah, yeah. So it's well. It's, Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so Ben, let's talk a little bit about you, man. You've been doing uh-huh. lots of cool stuff as well for 15 years. Yeah, I have. You have a I cool, have. cool story. So uh, Ben Warren, it's the it's the owner of Bipiro. So Bipiro, so if, you, if you're if you watching, you can see. <laughs> the <laughs> because, cheesy product yeah. placement. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, I really talk, appreciate that. That's yeah, so no, we've been talking about it because <laughs> it's something I take. You know, if you know me, you, you're going to, you know me, I'm going to talk about probiotics with <laughs> because I'm really passionate about, <laughs> about probiotics. <laughs> and, and I take that. So this is my personal one. Okay, by the way. And... You know, so you're the owner of Bipure. Um, You have a master in holistic nutrition. I do. Yeah. Uh, you're doing your PhD as well in mental health and nutrition. Yeah, just because life's not full enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fill, fill it in some more. That's amazing. And you've been um, you've been making this transition as well for being 
you know, a golf coach, yeah. a business owner. So Ben, yeah. let's start from, from the beginning. So uh -huh. where, where are you from and how was your, your childhood? Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm from just north of London. And mm. uh, so it's like a new town just north of London. And um, we were very lucky. We got to live in a, the green space out, outside of London. My father commuted four hours a day to work in the city. So mm. a four-hour commute was pretty solid for 25 years so that we wow. as kids could live in this nicer environment went to a school that was you know pretty much uh pretty much a new town north london comprehensive the way that i look at it and so you you sort of survived school if you survived school you were like yes made it mm -hmm. um it, it wasn't like uh and this, you know so you played sport and you know you played soccer football that's all there was that's the only sport. we couldn't even get a rugby team up mm -hmm. which like i was just i probably would have been okay at rugby given my build but anyway so um <laughs> so that was uh, and then i got it so it was always sort of football 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 soccer obviously and then i got a knee injury uh and the doctor said I, I wasn't allowed to uh, kick football again um, and uh, then got in a really bad car wreck that, that just changed my life. And so I was kind of uh, chapped under the car and put, put three fingers inside my skull and wow. surrendered to God in that moment and mm. um, kind of left my body for a bit and got put back in my body. And, How uh, old are you? I was two weeks before my 16th birthday. Wow. And that, that pretty much just um, changed my life in that moment. And, mm. and in that moment, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm here for a reason. I don't know what this reason is, but whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to try and do as good as I can. And so before that moment, I was just kind of a, just a, a kid going through life, surviving life. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that event completely shaped my life through, since then. And, and so I, I just started trying to do things as good as I can from then. And so with my studies, I started studying. I, you know, chances are I probably wouldn't have passed high school and I actually got out of high school okay and then mm -hmm. studied and... and uh, and, and I was bored, you know, kind of bored because I couldn't play football. And, and my dad's like, well, I, you know, why don't you come to golf with me? So my dad's a very keen golfer. And so he gave me a set of golf clubs. And I went to golf with him. And, and really quickly, within just a few years, I became a scratch, better than scratch golfer. And, um, yeah, got a scholarship to a university of South Carolina uh, mm -hmm. and uh, went off to play golf and, uh, and study experimental psychology. Um, and so I met my wife, who's a Kiwi, and I always kind of joke that yeah, I'm a souvenir from her OE. That, <laughs> that, that she, uh, yeah, that we met, uh, we met overseas, uh, and uh, natural progression was become a pro golfer. And I started to get some back issues at university, and then as when I moved away from the coaches and physios, um, my back pretty much just fell apart. I did try for my tour card once, missed my tour card by a shot, which is obviously dev it's devastating. Became a pro pro coach mm -hmm. uh professional so made a living from coaching <clears throat> and uh and that was going really really well uh, but my back was still pretty much a mess and mm -hmm. so I, then i went on a course to learn about optimal joint mechanics so biomechanics looking at you know where your joints need to sit for optimal joint expression and health for golf swing mm -hmm. and i met a lady who looked at me and said ben i can see you've got a bad back and I was like, oh, yeah, how do you know that? And she's like, I can see you've got a twist in your pelvis, you've got a scoliosis in your spine, you've got one shoulder higher than the other. When you're swinging the golf club just then, your transverse abdominal muscles not firing at all, you got your back's trashed. And I was like, mm. wow, that, that's impressive. Now, I knew most of that. I was seeing an osteo, a chiro, ex all blacks physio, um, a massage therapist. And, uh, and anyway, she then said something that changed my life. She said, yeah, it looks like it's driven by a food intolerance. Mm. It looks like it's dairy. Yeah. Mm. And I looked at her and like... Phew. You're nuts. Like, yeah. <laughs> how, how am I a food intolerance give me a bad back? And she's like, well, you've got shared nerve innervations from your, for, for your, from your spine, for your small intestine, and then also your, um, the muscles that stabilize your pelvis. So if you start putting, getting a pain circuitry on that small intestine, you're going to shut down these muscles that stabilize your pelvis. And I was like, huh. And, and I'm like, what, what makes you think it's dairy? And she goes, well, you don't breathe very well through your nose. Your head's migrated forward so you can breathe better through your mouth. Mm. And that's really common when people have problems with dairy. And so I was still fairly skeptical and i was like well surely there must be a test that i could take and she's like yeah you need to do an igg iga eliza blood test specialist test that has to go to america to see if your body's building immune molecules to the food you're eating and so i was like great let's get one of them got one of them a number of weeks later it came back that i had a very severe immune response to whey protein which is obviously a protein found in dairy so i cut out cut out dairy products uh, my back didn't get better straight away but what happened within about two weeks is that the asthma that i'd had since i was about six years old mysteriously disappeared Wow. And and so at that point I was like, I thought I was a smart person, and <laughs> and I'm like, how did I not know this? How did I not know yeah. that the food I was eating had such a dramatic impact on how I felt? Mm. And I was like, how does everyone not know this? 
<laughs> and I'm like, how is this just like not common knowledge that the food you eat affects how you feel? Mm. And uh, and so that was it. It turned off this insatiable desire to hit golf balls and turned on an insatiable desire to understand the human body. And yeah, and so I went and trained through one of the top health and performance institutes in California under Paul Check, an unbelievable guy, mm. absolute freak of a man. And um, and then ended up getting a master's degree in nutrition. And yeah, mm. so that was... Uh, so that's that's kind of been it and so over the last sort of 15 years been really delving super deep into i guess physiology biochemistry nutrition and then also um also emotional health and spiritual health mm-hmm. um and so particularly the last uh, few years it's been a lot more personally centered in the emotional health and and spiritual health aspects because for me um, the brain, what you're thinking. Well, we know that whatever you're thinking about is lighting up in your brain and your hypothalamus is looking at what, what's lighting up and then it's telling your body's your pituitary gland and the rest of your body's physiology to respond to what's lighting up in your brain. So it doesn't matter whether it's real or not. If it's lighting up in your brain, your body thinks it's real. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so if you're trying to be healthy and you've got unhealthy thoughts, your body's physio- mm-hmm. physiology is not going to be healthy. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and so you have to start dealing with the mind level. And then, and then obviously when you start dealing, dealing with the mind level, there's things that happen that you, no matter what you think, you can't feel better. Mm-hmm. Like somebody dies. Yes. Right? Yeah. And so then you have to have a spiritual model to make yourself feel better. Mm-hmm. And so if, if no other reason, like, I mean, there's a lot of reasons, good reasons to have a spiritual model, but, you know, if no other reason, why not have a spiritual model to make yourself feel better? So, mm-hmm. so um, for me, it kind of was full circle and brought me back around um, to then really exploring and trying to understand um, my car accident mm-hmm. as to what did this mean and what does that mean for life. Mm-hmm. So that kind of gives you my life in a nutshell. There it is. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> that's super interesting. So when did when did you move to New Zealand then? I uh, moved to New Zealand, I think it was 98. Yeah, mm. 98. So I've been here yeah, 20, 20 mm-hmm. years. Yeah. And so, so you started to be pure here, right? New yeah, I started in New Zealand. Uh, in, in, in Basically, they, they joke it was under the stairs at a gym in Havelock North. Uh-huh. So Peak Fitness, it wasn't <laughs> actually under the stairs, but it was an office that could have been under the stairs because uh-huh. it was like kind of that sort of big. So yeah, I just started, just started um, one-on-one, just helping people. And then, um, and then I, I, I kind of was like, the essentials or fundamentals that I talk about are... are I just believe so much in them, like, you know, just hydration, mm-hmm. s- sleeping, eating the right foods for you to stabilize your budget, really, whole food diet, these, these kind of fundamentals ex- exercise. Um, that I was like, you know, I was getting bored of telling the cl- my clients, you know, six times a day individually, this is what you need to eat. And, this what, and so I'm like, well, let, what, what I'll do, we'll do a Thursday night evening class and, and um, you can come on a Thursday night and we'll spend two hours and we'll do it as a group. And it'll, it'll be way cheaper for you, and I only have to say it once. This mm-hmm. is more oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is going to work. And uh, and so so I started doing evening classes, and then and and they they were going really well. And then people were like, you know, it'd be really great if I could just come for a weekend and learn this all on a weekend, so that I don't have to come every Thursday night. I mean, just get it done in intensive. So then we started doing weekend seminars, and so those weekend seminars really grew over a period of eighteen months. I put. Uh, three and a half thousand people through a weekend seminar in Hawke's Bay wow. alone. So pretty much anyone who was interested in health um, what, had, had come and done my weekend seminar. Uh-huh. And so we basically started, we saw a bell curve of people coming and then it dropped off because we'd pretty much hit everybody in Hawke's Bay who was interested in health at that time. So uh-huh. this is going back 12, 13 years ago. Uh-huh. And, um, and so then I started, um, and obviously, you know, series of burnouts and stuff like that, because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a recovering workaholic. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and, and I mean, you know, well, being a workaholic, you know, obviously the most socially acceptable addiction in the modern world. Yes. And, <laughs> and so I, uh, yeah, and so a number of burnouts and stuff. So I then put the program online and then started going to, to striking out to Palmerston North or Taupo and to do seminars. And yeah, so those seminars have now just grown and grown. And so these days it's generally national tours and we, you know, we sold out to Papa at 700 oh. um, last year, which was just, just the craziest thing ever. I mean, you just like, you see 700 people come into Papa and you're like, they're here for wow. a nutritionist? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are they? It's incredible. Uh-huh. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, so so these days I, I do a lot of talking, mm. <laughs> which I love. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, and and so 
the, the seminars are kind of a, a, a big part of, of my life mm. and, and life at BPO for me. And uh, they're, they're a lot of fun. That's amazing. Yeah, one of the things I read about you and, you know, I, I really like it because, you know, I, I get inspired by it. So it's me and in a, in a mission. You know? yeah, that's, yeah. It's, that's you. <laughs> it, 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 it really is. Uh, and, um, yeah. It, 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 well, it, I say it really is. It really has been. Um, mm. I, I'd like to think I'm, I'm changing now, and I'll come back to the, to the analogy, the the, the 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 Facebook thing you've got up at mm-hmm. the moment, like work hard. So mm. that, that was me. Like so, for me, for many years, um, I used to just whip myself. Mm. Like, come on, go go, and and I I I I've been a big practicer of mindfulness and awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, for a long time, and so I used to use the mindfulness though to 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 see where I was weak, mm-hmm. so I could then work harder. Right, I mean. <laughs> right. which is, just gave me an excuse to whip myself more. Uh, and then, uh, and I was working with an incredible psychologist, Anna Fries, and she was like, "Ben, you know, if you had a really good racehorse, would you just keep whipping it?" Mm, and I'm like, mm, "No," mm. <laughs> and but I'm like, "I don't know any other way." And she's like, well, really, you got to do is you got to see what the racehorse needs and you got to stop and listen and feel and see what the racehorse and then give the racehorse what it needs. I love that. To, Super powerful. To get to the next level. Yeah, and yeah. so then, you know, so then I was like, so rather than like pushing emotions down or denying myself mm. or, or, you know, these things that we do to be successful, mm-hmm. I, I started looking at well, why do I actually want to do it? You know, look inside and, and start connecting in and having self-compassion for these things mm-hmm. and then you actually start then seeing what you actually need to be successful mm-hmm. and then you can give yourself what you need as opposed to whipping yourself so what i learned through that process is that um you know mindfulness is obviously really important but self-compassion yes yeah. you need equal amounts of self-compassion because otherwise you just become super aware and then you just can I swear you just beat the yeah, shit? Yeah, you can. You just, beat, you just beat the shit out of yourself more yeah. <laughs> because you've got more fuel because you're more aware. Uh-huh. And so you actually then, you know, so I, I for many years, for about 10 years, I, I, I had a lot of awareness, but not a lot of self-compassion. And, and so I whipped myself pretty hard, mm-hmm. which, you know, which, you know, you sit, I sit back now and it's like, wow, you know, I've cre- you know, got an incredible company and, and we've done a lot. But, um, you know, there's a cost to that always, of course. Mm-hmm. And it's a double-edged sword. So I'm just, I'm just putting that out there as, as, you know, like the work hard thing. Yeah, and, yeah. and obviously there's these other, these other aspects. So the, the sleeping, mm. the eating, the healthy diet, uh, th- these, these aspects uh, will make the boat go faster. Mm. Yeah, because amazing. I saw that your transformation. I I watched this this week uh, your TED talk. Uh huh. Yeah, super interesting. I love I love when you show the the you know it's what's it's a sad thing, but it's I think it's a really good way to bring awareness to us about the you know the increasement of um, obesity. Sure. You know, and uh, yeah, and it's shocking you know to see that. And, yeah. Um, you know, and you know you show a picture of yourself as well. And when you were dealing with the inflammatory injuries, no? yeah. So can you explain? So what w- what's the inflammatory injury and how your body was, you know, was dealing with that? I was inflamed, then? you know, and mm. most people are inflamed. Um, and you know, they're inflamed for for a lot of reasons. I mean, you, oh my gosh, they're inflamed. You know, we've got the perfect storm at the moment in the mm. modern world uh, that's driving inflammation, and and obviously. You, um, Nutrition is my hammer, so that's that's what I use to kind of mm-hmm. <laughs> swap these things down. So, but yeah, our diet in the modern world is 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 just so pro-inflammatory. Whether that's from the amount of sugars we're eating, mm-hmm. whether that's from the amount of processed grains and gluten that we're eating, whether that's from the excess omega six fatty acids that we're eating that drive inflammation, not enough omega three fatty acids to control inflammation, whether that's from not enough of the mineral and vitamin cofactors we need to control. Um, some of these biochemical processes within our body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we, we, we're pretty much in, in, in the perfect storm mm. of, of inflammation. And, and, you know, we see that obviously inflammation, for some of your listeners, you know, they, they've heard the word, but it, it's, it's really collateral damage by your immune system. How do you know if you've got it? Well, if you've got achy joints, you've got increased inflammation. If you've got mental health issues, like depression is an inflammatory disease. Mm, that's it, super interesting yeah, yeah so yeah. people don't mm. people don't even think about you know i'm feeling a bit bit depressed and and a bit blue and i mean don't get me wrong that's a natural part of life but um you know my goal is to improve people's experience of life mm-hmm. that's that's you know why i started be pure and that's why i do what i do is how do we improve people's experience of life and so 
some of these fundamental aspects controlling inflammation. If you're not sleeping enough, you're going to be more inflamed. Mm -hmm. okay? yeah. If you're exercising wrong for you, you're going to be more inflamed. If you've got increased stress levels, you're going to be more inflamed. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's like you know, these fundamental things, if you're not, you're not recovering enough between your exercise, you're going to be inflamed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's about having you know, these, these base fundamentals in place um, these essentials for me, I call them essentials. That, 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 yeah. So in the, in the moment in the modern world, unfortunately, for for many of us, and it's challenging. You know, like it's. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not. Don't get me wrong. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. Um, <laughs> I'm not perfect. I, I, I am actually been working very hard on being less perfect. Yes. Uh, because perfect is just whipping yourself more. Yes. It doesn't get you there. Yes. Um, so you've got to actually stop and I'm go, the same what do I then. need? Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm, so true. So Ben, what's, so you, you mentioned uh, sugar, you know, being one of the, the, the biggest cause, you know, what yeah. else, what, what other type of, um, uh, foods foods yeah i mean really we're looking at the um, you, the three main ones are obviously going to be anything that's got a lot of processed sugar in it so sugar you start mm -hmm. feeding the unfriendly bacteria in the gut they release a, a molecule that, um, of their metabolism called lipopolysaccharide which breaks the junctures in the gut mm -hmm. so then um, our body starts losing differentiation between kind of um, what's you and what's not you essentially so you get an elevated, elevated immune response mm. from there. So you, it's, well, let me say that in a perhaps clearer way, it is that your immune system will start tagging the food you're eating as, as a, an invader. And so then you get an increased inflammatory immune response to that. And so then the immune system talks to the whole body and so you then get systemic immune response elevated chronic inflammation so that's one mechanism just giving you there's a number of mechanisms that sugar mm -hmm. is problematic um and so then processed grains so so like gr gluten so gluten containing the bread we're eating now is just nothing like the bread mm. your grandmother was eating all right so due to the hybridization of grains um we 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 have a lot more gluten in 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 wheat and, and not only that they've in in hybridizing grains and making grains disease resistance resistant they unknowingly have increased the lectins so lectins are a molecule that plant make make plants make to stop insects from eating them and so what what's happened is in making the plants disease resistant it looks like they've made it human resistant as well mm. like that so that so we can't eat it either mm. uh, and, and so uh and so uh, in you know, there's a lot of research coming out, sort of looking at this lectin-based protein toxicity um, from the foods. And so, for me, that's a bit. If, my recommendation around gluten is if you've got anything at all wrong with you, I would be recommending going gluten-free. Anything at all wrong. And it's quite funny because I say that at seminars, and then sometimes somebody will come up to me and they'll go, you know, I've got a I've got a Hashimoto's, which is a you know underactive autoimmune thyroid condition. Do you think I should be off gluten? And I'll be like. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> like, like, uh, and I mean, like if, if, just give it as an example. Every case of underactive or overactive thyroid we've ever seen, gluten has been a problem. Mm. And so, gluten would be an, uh, another one. And then you've got your processed, packaged food, modern Western diet. So, a lot of these emulsifiers um, and some of these chemical constituents they're putting in there highly been shown to be um, very disruptive to the gut membrane mm -hmm. and then uh, and because you know 80 odd percent it's 80 to 90 percent of your immune system is located in the gut and the digestive system because this is this is the easiest way to get a pathogen into your body is to eat it mm -hmm. okay and so this is why most of our immune systems in our gut because our immune system is looking at the food we're eating going is that food is that protein particularly the proteins is that protein food or is that protein a virus or a bacteria because mm -hmm. viruses and bacteria are just proteins too. Mm -hmm. And so our body has to differentiate between the proteins that are food and the proteins that are viruses and bacteria. But if, we, if we're eating molecules like emulsifiers that are, that are damaging our, our gut membrane, we then start, start getting a lot of foods, getting into the bigger proteins that haven't been broken down into the, into the bloodstream where the immune system will start tagging them as an invader. Mm -hmm. and so uh, and so then you get an elevated immune response and so that could you know obviously be joints it could be then your immune system starts looking for proteins in the environment that are that are that are more threatening or dangerous so you know so you get hay fever because you know, why is your immune system responding to pollen mm -hmm. which is a plant protein okay you breathe it in so for me when i was at asthma i went and saw the asthma specialist in the uk and they were like ben you're allergic to dust mites well, we lived in a thatched cottage. We had, I had no chance. There was dust mites everywhere, right? <laughs> and, and, and so well, why is my immune system so upregulated that it's, it's responding 
to a dust mite, which is, you know, like a, a little, little, little protein, mm. uh, animal protein. And so, um, and so, yeah, we, we're getting this upregulation, which is then driving this immune response systemically. And so, um, it's, mm, yeah, it's those main reasons. Those mm. are the, there's other reasons. I mean, I can get into other reasons like low vitamin D, low zinc, low vitamin A. These are all, uh, you know, nutrients that are essential for gut health mm. and we're very deficient on in them so 84 you know, percent of new zealanders are deficient in vitamin d that's like 18 animals um yeah, that's a lot it's huge oh. and so if you haven't got enough vitamin d vitamin d controls the ch- juncture and tightness of the uh, junctures in the gut so if you haven't got enough vitamin d you're going to get a loose gut anyway mm-hmm. uh and, and, and zinc again very very important and many many people zinc deficient and so um Here's a lot of reasons. Again, modern world. So it's the food we, you know, not only it's, a, it's an absolute perfect storm. We're eating the wrong foods. Plus, the foods we're eating haven't got the nutrients in that they used to have. So we're not actually getting the nutrients that we need for our body to kind of operate. Mm-hmm. Wow. So Ben, so what's the so in the opposite hand? So what's the what are the foods? Could help uh, yeah. combat the, the inflammation process. Yeah. So foods, you know, uh, let let's let's start with like the the, the the I guess the most basic things is eating a whole food diet. Mm. So eat, literally eating whole natural foods as they're presenting in nature. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, the the gluten bread thing is probably the only thing that's kind of on the side. So you know, eliminate that. Mm-hmm. But whole natural veggies, meat, veggies, meat, some fruit. You know, mm-hmm. nuts, seeds, that's good. Uh, okay, so, you know, that, that's, and, you know, I'd, I'd like to think that most people who are eating a healthy diet are doing that, right? Uh, and so then you can start really looking at, um, if you if you do have a lot of joint pain like rheumatoid arthritis, you may want to, like, eliminate the nightshade family. And so that would be, uh, so you asked what we could add in, and I'm eliminating again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me let me go back. Yeah. Uh, and so I want to add in, so for uh, edges. And so you can, you know, things like um, specialist molecules like, ginger or turmeric mm, okay so I love that. yeah so you know, both of them uh, lots of good research showing that they're very anti-inflammatory mm-hmm. and, and they help turn off this inflammatory cascade omega-3 fatty acids you know we can get them from from foods grass-fed animal meats free-range eggs um from walnuts and chia seeds and flax seeds uh, but but I, i'm a big fan of getting them from pre-made versions which are from animals like fish oil mm-hmm. okay so plenty of omega-3 fatty acids is going to be something we can add in as well to can help control this inflammatory process mm-hmm. and so it really is a combination of not only um what what you want to take out it is probably more about taking out the wrong stuff mm-hmm. and then and then trying to put the good stuff back in mm. so ben what's your favorite food kind of the food if you could uh, you know have every day you'd make the, yeah um... yeah uh, okay that's that's All right, so I, I I get asked that a lot, uh, and, and I have to I'm going to have to ask you to be more specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and the reason being is if I'm answering from a nutritional perspective, so I get uh-huh. asked like, um, you know, if I could only eat one food for the rest of my life, what would I eat? And so if I was answering that from a nutritional perspective, I'd yeah, for say, health benefits. Yeah, I'd, I'd say beef liver. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, it's, because it's the most most nutritional yeah. <laughs> you know it's got the most b vitamins and stuff like that you know like right. so, so that's the most nutritional um you know it would be you know that and kale yeah <laughs> of course right? so kale is the number one nutrient dense plant food um uh, but you know like the thought of eating beef liver and cow for the rest of my life i, I actually pretty much tried to do that for two years um did you yeah yeah uh, yeah and uh, yeah i got really sick of it <laughs> I, mean, i used to be um really 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 anal about food like uh, um when i reach i used to be like 82 kilos so like right now i'm like 98 mm-hmm. and um and and so i've actually trying to go the other way right now i'm trying i'm uh-huh. trying to um be okay with uh, and this has been a journey like be okay with actually eating health foods that are not healthy mm-hmm. like if yeah, it makes yeah. me feel good i'm gonna eat it yeah so 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 then if you just ask me what's my favorite food uh-huh. uh, i'm i'm gonna then go to probably like uh oh, Gosh. <laughs> I, I think it's got to be a avo smash like a, a uh, yeah. avo smash oh, on, okay. on a really really good like either midnight baker or omg bread which is like gluten-free and mm, really heavy I grainy uh, bread um yeah with you know some peas and some daca on top and uh yeah i think maybe a, a poached egg uh-huh. th- th- i think that that yeah that <laughs> sounds really I, good. I, i enjoy that so we, we you, you probably know I, i live on a you know, 15 acre organic permaculture which had well, designed farm uh-huh. uh where we grow about 80% of the food we eat and so our avo, avo trees um are, are really beginning to flourish so uh, uh, if any of you can, can grow avocado trees plant an avocado 
Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that it, it is one of the ultimate joys of life to be able to line up like 10 days worth of avocados because it's one of the f- few sort of fruits that you pick ripe, uh, uh, pick, yeah. pick unripe, and uh-huh. then they ripen off the tree. So you, you, you just pick them and then you can just line them up. And, and, and so then you've got, oh, this, you know, and, and, and then, so you've got a perfect, always got a perfect avocado there, uh, which is, you know, that's one of the few pleasures in life. You know, yeah. money can't buy that. I, I, I love, <laughs> money, money can't no, buy the perfect no. avocado. <laughs> I love you say that because I must have maybe 10 avocado trees on my, on my garden. Love yeah, I'm going to show you later. Love <laughs> it. Well done you. Yeah, it's, yeah, uh, wow, you're growing avocado down here. Is it because yes. you're close to the water? I would have thought you would have get frosts that would knock them because mm. you know, frost hits them with Yeah, it needs a little bit more you know, special attention, but I'm, I'm yeah. getting there. I'm learning about it. <laughs> oh, that's sensational, man. Yeah. But I'm going to show you. What else do you grow on, on your farm? Okay, what else? we grow so uh oh my gosh um pretty much because 80 percent of men it's a it's huge a really good oh, it's huge yeah. huge um so yeah all your all your pip fruit stone fruit so all your you know apples mm. full range of apples from early mid to late season uh, all the way from cookers i've got a monty surprise which i'm very proud of monty surprise is a the apple pectin in monty surprise uh, massive research going on for its anti-cancer properties so a lot of anti-cancer properties of apple pectins mm. so the monty surprise is as the apple pectin is particularly special so it's a big mm. big cooker um and so um and then you know all your I have to just think about me eating them and then I, then I can come up with them. So <laughs> obviously cherries, uh, blueberries, boysenberries, raspberries, um, strawberries, uh, and then um, uh, uh, let's go with um, apricots, nectarines, mm. peaches, um, figs, macadamias, um, going along, kiwi fruit, and now I'm walking along the terrace, grapefruit, oranges, uh, lemons, limes, um, yeah. Oh man, amazing. That's yeah, and so that's that's kind of like we got a food forest. So I, I wanted to plant a food forest um, so that my kids can literally just wander around the farm and go, ooh, ooh. So you can literally just wander and go eat. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and so that's what we're doing. You know, like it's it's great. You can see, we've got a big berry enclosure. We had to build a berry enclosure because the birds like to, they they get to the berries before you. They're very clever. Mm. And uh, and so, uh, but you know, sometimes I'll lose my youngest daughter for a while, and you'll be like, "Where's Macy?" And she'll just be down in the berry enclosure, and she'll just come back, kind of covered in berries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we go, or you go picking berries. You go pick berries, and uh-huh. she, you know, we have a little little basket each that we fill the berries. She has no berries in her basket. <laughs> We've been there an hour. My basket's like over four because because she's just been eating them. Uh-huh. So that one for the basket, one for me. And so um, that's really special, you uh-huh. know. And so then. That's we've got amazing. massive amazing. veggie gardens oh. so we've got um one two three four main veggie gardens oh. um we dug up the lawn when we got there and and oh. put in put, put put veggie garden in obviously herbs um all that stuff um we've tried growing grains but grains you know we don't tend to eat a lot of grains anyway oh. um or, or try not to um you know they're yummy we mm. all know that yeah <laughs> um but i try not to eat too many of them um they just make me fat really fast mm. and um but we have grown some quinoa and and stuff like that but uh mm-hmm. yeah at the moment we, d- we don't do any grains or anything like that so yeah, yeah so potatoes and then all, all, your, all your veggies all your veggies mm-hmm. yeah that's amazing mm. so ben i'm gonna make a statement here to like you to comment about it you know, sure so, um so the major disease the major problems we have starts on our on our gut right yeah yeah and um and i'd like you to to talk about the difference so what's prebiotic and mm-hmm. probiotic so people can sure. educate yeah more about. you're absolutely right man so like the, the gut is 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 one of the keys to health mm. you know and and so many people have got gut problems in today in the modern world because of the foods we're eating yeah and so <clears throat> prebiotics and probiotics are both very beneficial so um i'll start with probiotic first if that's mm-hmm. okay uh so probiotic is a, a bacteria that has a, has to have has been shown to have a, a known benefit for the human health mm. all right so these these are beneficial bacteria so you know probiotics you know the, there are foods that are natural food sources of probiotics so yogurt you know, lactobacillus acidophilus, um, you know, fermented foods, any, any kind of fermented foods like sauerkraut are going to be, you know, fantastic source of probiotics. And, you know, these probiotics may not actually get through the stomach. They may get killed. But even dead beneficial bacteria has been shown to have a beneficial effect. 
right? Ah, uh, that's so, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, so some people get hung up like, oh, they're not going to work. But even the, the dead beneficial bacteria has been shown to have an effect. And then prebiotics. Prebiotics are the foods that feed the beneficial bacteria. Mm. Okay. So, you know, the, the standout performers in these are they're going to be legumes, your beans, uh, you know, beans and, and lentils. So they're, they're, you know, and then garlic and onion. Uh, but, there's, you know, there's a big list. Like nectarines are uh, also a prebiotic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so basically you, you're eating a, a whole food diet. So it's not only about having the right beneficial bacteria there, but it's then about feeding them. Mm. And so you can actually change your microbiome quite click, quickly depending on when you change your diet. So if you can change your diet, you actually change your microbiome. And so the microbiome, um, you know, we're looking at 80 to 90% of your serotonin being produced in the gut. Mm, that's some, yeah. Yeah, that's and, so, and so you, that, now serotonin is a big molecule. It doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier, but, but the precursors to serotonin do. And so the, the beneficial bacteria are making the molecules that really control how we think and feel. Mm. And so our foods are directly impacting what we're eating, are directly impacting how we think and feel. And I mean, this is kind of moving more into my sort of PhD field where I'm looking at, you know, food, nutrients and anxiety. Um, Specifically, I'm looking at nutrients and anxiety. But, you know, I've got a real interest these days um, in in how do we feel better Mm -hmm. on all levels. And so, you know, nutrition is a very, very simple, easy way for all of us to to feel better from eating all right and i think you know i i asked this you know the, i've asked this question to thousands of people um and the answer is always the same you know and i'll ask you you know have you ever ever had a, a week where you've eaten really well i mean obviously you had many weeks mm. where you've eaten really well but <laughs> <clears throat> but uh <laughs> I try. you try I know. okay good so how do you feel from eating really well for a week how do you um, feel amazing yeah. feel good yeah amazing. have you ever had a day where you've eaten like shit Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's okay, good. <laughs> How did you feel? Yeah, pretty bad. Too. Pretty bad. Yeah. And that's yeah, I love it because it's simple as that. To know yeah. That. Well, that's exactly what the research says. There's a lot of good research mm. around whole food diets, Mediterranean diets, and impact on mood, impact on suicide, uh, impact mm. on these things. And we know that the better people eat, the better they feel. Mm-hmm. The worse they eat, the, the trouble is, the challenge is, is that we are hardwired to hunt and destroy sugar, salt, and fat. Mm. And we're hardwired for survival for those three. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sugar, because sugar is generally found with nutrients in nature. Okay. So the sweeter a peach, the more nutrients we have. Um, salt as an electrolyte, very, very essential. You know, white gold, you know, before it was a commodity. For, mm. Very, very important. Okay. And then fat for calories. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're, we're chemically hardwired for survival for sugar, salt, and fat. Okay. It, when we eat, actually eat sugar, salt, and fat, it releases dopamine, our feel good reward neurotransmitter mm. and so we're actually you know but in the modern world it's really easy to get enough sugar salt and fat right it's and the food manufacturers they probably don't know the the biochemistry behind that but they just know that hey you put sugar salt and fat in it people are going to like it they're going to buy it mm-hmm. you know you only got to you know friday night you got to drive drive downtown and drive past you know fast food restaurants and people are queuing up for that dopamine hit Mm. <laughs> right? they're que- queuing up to feel good yeah, which and, yeah. and then you go down the bars and they're queuing up to feel good in other ways mm. um and and so uh That's so true yeah. you know like and and so we're, we're working against you know and which is fine because for me i guess part of empowering people around nutrition and feeling good is just understanding that mm-hmm. and that's okay and sometimes you feel like shit and want to go eat a burger that's yeah. fine too, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah. at the end of the day, it's, it's what you do for most of your time that counts. So it's the 80, 20 rule. So I, I got a thing, I got a, I got a thing that, um, I think moderation is the next extreme diet. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, like I'm going plant-based, no, I'm going keto, you know, I'm going to yeah. trump you, I'm going to go carnivore, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and, and, and so like so moderation is actually the next extreme diet because, you know, all these other diets, all you're doing, and I've been there and I've helped, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of people with, you know, various forms of eating disorders, mm-hmm. um, is that all you're doing is whipping yourself like it's, it's just another form of self-punishment, really. Mm. And so you've got to really just ask the question, what, what, what do I really want? And I mean, obviously, what we really want is to love yourself, which is mm-hmm. you know, much easier said than done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, uh, yeah, and so 
so people are you know using these use and a lot of identity as well attached to these types of diets whether it's plant food vegan or you know i was vegetarian for six years and or or, or you know ketogenic or carnival yeah and so like moderation is is, is the new extreme diet and mm-hmm. so like if you what you're doing for 80 percent of the time and i just want to tell you listeners and yeah, yeah, yeah. people watching online is like it's okay it's okay you you know just you're doing well life's not easy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doing well go easy on yourself yeah yeah, yeah. Tr- try and eat mostly whole foods mm. and if you do trip over and a croissant lands in your mouth that's okay too yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i'm just gonna get you know a little um observation of what you said w- why do you think it's so hard for us to love love ourselves Oh what's, my gosh. What's missing on wow. this process? That's a great question. What's missing in the process? Why is it hard for us to love ourselves? Um, I, 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 think, I think it's hard. I believe that it's hard to love ourselves because we're looking in the wrong place. Mm. That's, uh, you, we're, we're looking for this. We're looking for love in our action, you know, not necessarily in our actions, but in this in this physical form. Mm-hmm. And the only, for me, the, the, the true love is the love from the universe that the universe gives us or God or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Um, that That's the true love because you only got to look around and it's abundant. We're loved. Mm. Look, we got a roof above our head. We got a floor under our feet. There's food. Mm. Uber drive drove me here. Wow, that's love from the universe, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's everywhere. It's just so everywhere that we. It's so blatantly obvious that we don't see it. And so, mm. don't get me wrong. I'm, um, I'm still, you know, working through that myself, and and uh, in a big way. But for me, the more I can stay connected to um, the abundance of the universe and and like how lucky we are just to be here mm-hmm. and experience this. Um, the more love I feel. Mm. And, uh, you know, for me, I, I've got a, I, I'm very clear that I do what I do um, because of my love of helping people. And, and I, you know, love and connection is what makes me feel good. I've, I've kind of got clear on that. And I, I actually think that f- just about for everybody, that's what they're looking for is love and connection. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and so this is my way of loving and connecting is, is and contributing is through talking about diet or talking about, um, you know, talking about some of these other things, you know, around the mental aspects or spiritual aspects of, of, of feeling good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Well, how about you? I'm curious. Yeah. <laughs> and how, well, the question was, how, how do you love yourself? Is that what you said? Or, or yeah. Why, why it's so hard? Why it's so hard? Yeah. I'm or, curious to know your answer. Because, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, good question. I think, um, yeah, has this? Uh, I was talking, you know, the other day I was talking to one of one of my students, and she's she's a you know it's a woman, and we mm-hmm. were talking about, um, for example, I asked her about, uh, you know, which which age is the peak for a woman, you know, s- you know, feel confident about mm-hmm. themselves, you know, and uh, I just read in one of the papers I'm doing at university, you know, and they did a research and they said about the peak for a woman, it's when they are nine years old. And after that, it's just you know, it's it's downhill with oh the self. Oh my gosh! Yeah, exactly. And uh, I was shocked with that. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah, yeah. And um, and you know, and why the you know why is the why this reason right? There's amount of a pressure from um, from the society, from the magazines, from the TV, for what they expect you to be to become. Mm-hmm. And I and I think this creates this this massive um, necessity of becoming something we are not so we pretend uh, um, you know sometimes being someone we are yeah, not uh, absolutely um, for the sake of uh, yeah know, being accepted absolutely and, you know in all those things and I think it does it's a uh, because when we start to fight with who we really are uh, we create this distinction and we don't accept who we are and I think that's when the, the, the problem That's when the problems come, yeah. yeah, because we start to create that, that resistance, right? That friction. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we when we start to accept who we are, and I mean with the good and the bad. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're human, right? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm a human having experience. It's not just an here. Instagram account here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. So true, you know, and, um, and understand, you know, my flaws, you know, understand my mistakes, you know, and... and um, 
you know, I can, I can make it better. You know, I can, okay, you know, I forgive myself and I know I'm not perfect and I, I'm going to try again. And yeah. sometimes I'm going to, I'm going to repeat the same mistake again, you know, and absolutely. as long as I think we have awareness of that and, you know, okay, so, you know, I did again, Oof, what do I need to do to improve that, to, you know, to avoid that suffering again. Yeah. Um, and, and understand, you know, we are human beings. We, no one born is with the, the manual. No, you know, and, no that's and, right. And it's so hard, you know, we expect from our parents, but when we don't have the parents, who's going to give us this information, this manual? And, and it's yeah. super hard, you know, we all trying... In, in trying to figure this stuff out, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's hard, right? So, but at the same time, I believe we are living in a, such a precious time now when, you know, having this type of conversation became, way, you know, it's becoming way more... Um, natural it is but, and, and accepted right yeah yeah and i think um and i think this is it's the beginning of the transformation because we can talk now yeah we can bring more bring awareness. it into the light so yeah thing. yeah and so people can understand me and we are all you know full of mistakes you know we, we are you're a combination of all that yeah and that's all good i think uh, if we accept that i think we're gonna be able to love ourselves more I love, it. That's, love it yeah that's, that's self-compassion my, right self-compassion yeah, yeah. Exactly. and it's um i, I was as you were talking there, sorry. You, you're talking about so jujitsu, yeah, mm, but it's and so yeah. so that so really that's a, a microcosm of of what I what I'm seeing there. That that's an expression of life within that, right? Mm. It's like you just, you, so you know you, you don't do a move as good as you can. You go you, you kind of like you get back on and you, and you try and do it again mm. better. It's a full of improvisation as well. You know, I always say to you know so when I teach a class, you know, so I try to teach a technique. You know, so I kind of you know we show step one, yeah. step two, step three, step four. But my friend, but when you're in the real situation, there are no such a thing. You're gonna you're gonna. Yeah, yeah. To, to be able to improvise with that, you know, and sometimes the number four is not going to be there, the number three it's going to be super hard to achieve, you know. But <laughs> you know, if, if you have just the number one, my friend, play with this card, you know, make the best as you can, improvise with that. You know? yeah. I think if we become too like life, it, it's that's, like life, yeah, improvise. go with the universe, yeah, whatever's yeah. presented in front of you, surrender to that, yeah, go with that. I won't, I'm gonna put my um. My marketing manager, Lauren, I'm going to embarrass her by saying, so, so <laughs> she's just started Jiu Jitsu? Oh, really? She's that's a, awesome. She's a white belt. Oh, uh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> she was, she... <laughs> Lauren, so if you're in Wellington, please come to visit us at Combat Room so we can, you know, train, yeah. train you better. I'm totally embarrassed her now, so. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, you know, but I, I think I think it's that, you know, Ben. I think that's the um, I think that's the, the progress, you know, for, for us to be able to accept mm. a, a little bit more or limitations, huh? Yeah, yeah, and and yeah, it is it's so true, mm. so true. <laughs> it's good. It's good so Ben, can, can you can you please tell a little bit? Me and was so powerful. So uh, when you talk about um, it's something I love that uh, because we can see in so many different. Uh, um, uh, scenarios as well. The effect of you know in seven in seven years, all our cells. Yeah, replicating, you know, turning over. Yeah, yeah. So we have this opportunity to mm -hmm. pretty much recreate ourselves. So yeah, yeah. So for you know, those people aren't really familiar with it, there's there's a, a hypothesis theory that that yeah our bodies turn over every seven years, mm. and and I mean it depends on where the cells are in your body. So uh, actually the epithelial cells in your gut, um, uh, they, they turn over every four days. So the fastest turning over cell in the body. Wow. So every four days you're sloughing them off, and so um, all the way through to when you look at you, sort of the 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 the, the femur and the bone in your thigh here, um, you, you sort of probably looking more like it every three to four years. Mm -hmm. uh, and so and so there's this cellular turnover. So I, I love that concept. I love the concept that you in you know in seven years time you've got an opportunity to be a new you. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I, I yes. just, like, we got an opportunity to build a brand new you every seven years, and then you got you know for me it's like well what are you building a new you out of, and and so you need the right raw materials to build the new you, and and so obviously it's providing those 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 nutrients um, to 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 have optimal uh, gene expression, genetic mm -hmm. expression to have the best version of you as possible, and and I mean I'm a I'm a big believer that. Um, you know, like longevity is going to hockey stick. 
So like, you know, at the moment we, we, we've seen, you know, obviously in the last 50 years, a dramatic increase in, in, in um, how long we're living. And you know, I, that's, I think we've only, we're only at the bottom of the hockey stick and that, that thing's going to go up. And like, so for me, um, I, I honestly think 150 is, is, you know, so I'm 46, nearly 47. So I'm about a third of the way through right now. I honestly think 150 is, is probably right now very very achievable and and i think that potentially um we're, you know potentially you, there's a lot more potential to go further um and well, yeah, and so not, not only from nutrition but a lot of that's going to come from from medicine uh, and, and you know whether that stem cells and some different ways so mm-hmm. um the key is just to, to try and stay as healthy as possible but yeah i mean it's all, all well and good me talking about living a long time but you want to enjoy your life, right? Yeah. You want to enjoy life. So that's, that's where, you know, your experience of life. And, and so for me, that's where it all comes together because it's not only about, um, cause you know, if you, if I, you know, if you said Ben, that's it, you got to, you know, you're going to live to 150, but you're just going to eat beef liver and kale for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, after when I hit 75, I'll be like, you know what? I just can't face another beef <laughs> liver and kale salad. Um, you know, right. And so you yeah, got to yeah. enjoy life. So it's, you gotta, you get, get that balance, mm-hmm. get that balance. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So Ben, what, what, what are the supplements you take daily? <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> You're throwing me under the bus there. Um, I take a lot. Uh. Okay. I take a lot. Um, and, and I'm going to give people a perspective over why I take a lot. All right. Cause it's not just, I ran- love that. Uh. <laughs> it's not random. So, mm-hmm. um, so over the years I've done, I don't too much these days. I'm pretty relaxed. I've kind of got my system that, that I know how it works. I know how it runs. So I'm going to cough again. <coughs> and, um, and so um, I, I don't do too much fine tuning now, but I, I've probably, um, I've done some of the most comprehensive testing that you can do on the human body, on myself, mm. for fun. I don't fish. Um, so, you know, uh, that's my hobby. That, that has been my hobby in the past. And, and so, um, for example, I've had my urine um, and analyzed to the degree that we're looking at over 200 metabolites in my urine. And then from those metabolites, you can see um, how efficient your um, biochemical pathways are working. Wow. And then you can see it, what cofactors those biochemical pathways need to work optimally, and you can give those to your body mm-hmm. to get optimal um, expression of, of of how you not not really your genes, so it's almost like um, it's not not really epigenetics, but but basically to give optimal expression of that biochemical pathway on a daily level. Mm-hmm. So so I've kind of done that testing. I've done the most advanced kind of hormone testing that you can do. I've had my full genome mapped and, and tested. Mm, I, I've done the, some of the most advanced biome and microbiome testing that you can do and regular. So, um, and obviously blood work as well. And so, so what I take is based on all of that. So it's based on my genetics. It's based on the expression of my genes. It's based on having um, optimal expression of my biochemical pathways. So I take a lot of supplements. So I probably take uh, maybe like 70 capsules a day. Wow. Um, wow. And so... I'm close to that. Are you? Are you? <laughs> yeah. And so... I, um, with, yeah. I So... I, I have them down in my bag, actually. Uh. But, um, not... I put them in cap... You know, I put uh-huh. them in pill holders because otherwise yeah, yeah. it's a problem. Uh, and so I, I take a lot of... B, I take a lot of BP1. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the maximum legal dose we can give people is five. But um, because I, I, I'm, I live a very full life and I want to live a full life, five's not enough for me. I actually take 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, I then take... Um, so, sorry, just, what's inside of the BP1? BP1's a, a multivitamin and a mineral supplement. So it's got all the nutrients theoretically that we need mm. um, in, in one bottle. Right. Um, and when I... Oh, that's a big statement theory. Really. I mean, obviously, <laughs> let me back up there. Minerals and vitamins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Uh-huh. Um, so it's kind of like got all the things we know about that are essential that we need mm-hmm. uh, but but you know we we struggle to get those from our diet i mean it doesn't have the amino acids and the fatty acids and right things like that. so just a, got carried away excited mm-hmm. um it's got a lot of, it's over 50 ingredients so it's got yeah. a lot of stuff in it um <laughs> uh, and then um uh, and so then i and then i take yeah I, I, because of my genetics, I take a very special form of B9 and I take a lot of it. Mm. Because of my genetics, I take a very special form of B12 and a lot of it. Um, 
because I, I, I picked up toxoblastmosis, which is a really nasty parasite a couple of years back. Mm. And so I, I, I take huge amounts of zinc. I, I, mm. So I have to keep my immune system on top of the parasite. Right. So I take um, a, a huge amount of zinc. So I maybe mm. take one, two, three, four, five, six, six, six capsules of zinc. Wow. Some of them are my BPO brand. Some of them are not BPO brand for, for technical reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, then I take things for... Um, for coidin, for for stem cell release, mm. so um, like what? Um, so yeah, it's called for coidin, for um, and so I didn't, I don't know this one. F O I, I can't spell it. C O I D E N. That's not how you spell it. Ah, uh, um, oh, we're gonna find it. We put a link on the yeah, the put a link. So I take for coidin for for stem uh-huh. cell re- for stem cell release. Um, you know, things like turmeric, obviously. Things like, I, I take extra support for my adrenal glands to, to enable me to continue to make enough cortisol to be able to live the way that I want to live. Mm. Um, I take uh, things to, to extra things a lot, of, quite a lot for my liver uh, to keep my liver detoxifying the whole whole time. Mm. Um, so the, those are things like uh, dim is one of them, berberine's another one of them, milk thistle is another one of them. Uh, I, I take curcumin. Uh, for anti-inflammatory mm. uh, aspects, a um, lot of fish oil. I take um, a lot of fish oil. So uh, BPO three, which I think I, I see you have BPO three downstairs. The fish oil, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I so I take four I, capsules of that yeah, a day. I do take as well. Yeah, yeah nice. Which is mm. you know that's that's equivalent to a, if you went and bought a regular fish oil, that would be the equivalent to like. Um, uh, six yeah, it's kind of like you're getting up there, twenty, thirty capsules of regular fish oil mm. a day. Uh, and so it's quite a lot. So it's really anti-inflammatory. Right. Um, so, yeah. And so the goal of that is literally for me to be able to live my life however I want. Mm. Like if I want to get up at 4.30 and go do like that, I can. And if I want to work 80, 90 hours, I can. And if uh, so, and if I, you know, uh, if I want to go for a safari surf for five hours, I can. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, it's so it's so amazing to be able to say that. You know? it's, it's such empowering thing feeling right yeah i guess so yeah of course I'm, i guess i'm just used to it now like, yeah, like that's, yeah, but it's important yeah, no, yeah it is my work hard for that right? yeah it's yeah. my experience of life and um i'm transitioning at the moment i'm transitioning from um being motivated and whipping myself from not being enough so mm-hmm. for my whole life i've felt not enough and so i've just had to do more to to feel okay mm-hmm. and if i didn't that's why i was you know workaholic mm-hmm. and so if i didn't work a, if i didn't work 60 plus hours i, I felt like i was lazy and mm. so uh, and and so uh, but i'm transitioning from that um to now uh i feel like i'm okay like i'm enough mm-hmm. most of the time which is, which yeah, is yeah. a big breakthrough for me mm-hmm. and uh but i'm transitioning now to being motivated by contribution Mm. and so like so so rather than working because it makes me feel good i'm I'm looking at working um to contribute to others Mm -hmm. and and so i'm still in that transition period so it's kind of like Mm -hmm. um so i don't know why i'm telling you that but anyway yeah but that's yeah that's amazing because i think that's the you know the beginning of any transformation or to have um, knowledge and more awareness of what do you eat and you know, yeah. in this this whole process, it's so important. It's the beginning of the, yeah. the transformation. It is, and and uh, I'll say to people that um, I've been on this a long time. I'm type A. I'm anal. Mm. I'm on probably a number of spectrums of mental health, um, <laughs> like we all are. <laughs> yeah, of uh, course. And, yeah. and and so, please, you, they don't have to be like that. Mm-hmm. All right, it's fine to be you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, and you don't have to eat perfectly and you don't have to take a lot of supplements. I mean, wh- what I recommend is, is just, you know, eat a whole food diet, eat right to stabilize your blood sugar levels. Uh, and then I'd, I'd, I'd recommend to everybody they take a high quality multivitamin and it's best they can afford and a high quality fish oil, best they can afford. Mm-hmm. Like, ah, okay, that's awesome. That's, mm-hmm. f- for most people, if they just did that, their experience of life would dramatically improve. Wow, that's and the cool. research actually shows that mm-hmm. research actually shows around mental health that taking a, you know a, a, a high quality multivitamin dramatically improves mental health. Mm-hmm. That's so interesting. So Ben, it's so interesting to hear as well. You know, from outside, you know, see you achieving constantly, you know, a man in a mission, or you know, doing yeah, yeah. so many things. And how is that possible? You know, your mind keeps telling you you're not good enough. Uh, how how is yeah? And it's this conflict, right? Yeah. How's that possible? Yeah. It, it well, it, that's what drives. That's what has driven me. Mm. Um. And and so the last year or so, 
Um, it's it's not driven me as as much, but um, and I'm okay in my skin. I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm actually okay just um, being 98 kilos, mm-hmm. um, whereas like you know, ideally I'd like to be 92. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and and so you know, like and and so, but I'm I'm okay right now with yeah, with yeah. that. And so um, yeah, so from the outside, people kind of go. Like for me, if I if I look at anyone who's incredibly successful, mm. I I now know what I believe that there's something behind their success that's driving it, and it's usually some kind of whip on themselves. Oh man, so true. Yeah, I, it's usually I, like like and yeah, so the, the more successful what they are, or, yeah, the more they're covering up for something. Mm. <laughs> So true, and, and and so for me, and that's I, so powerful. Yeah, please yeah. keep keep Yeah, going. so so for me, I I had this huge not enough. It was insatiable. It didn't matter. Mm. Like if I as a golfer, I remember like shooting sixty nine on really hard golf courses in the US, and I'd I'd just go straight back to that one shot that I I didn't hit how I wanted that went in the bunker, and I'd go to the range and I'd hit golf balls for two hours till it was dark, hitting that one shot perfectly. Wow, and mm. and so that's how I got really good at golf. Mm-hmm. Which is really good at getting good at golf, but it doesn't really give you any peace in life. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like so you know, and so I mean, I remember going back uh, when I really started getting into this journey of of uncovering and looking at what was driving my motivation, which was all intrinsic for me. It came from internal for me. Mm. You know, like I, I did these things to feel better, and if I worked, if I if I worked hard for twelve hours, fourteen hours in a day, I, I could I, sit back at the end of the day and go, I feel okay never felt great but i feel okay mm-hmm. but then i'd wake up the next morning be empty again and i'd have to do it again to feel okay mm-hmm. okay and so um and so about 10 years ago i i kind of got that and and i mean i i you know i remember when my daughter was like one or two my eldest she's now 12 and i was i'd be rocking her in the swing and it was like two o'clock on a sunday afternoon and i'd already just been working the whole time and it'd be two o'clock on the afternoon, and and I'd be going. I remember thinking, okay, just another ten more minutes, and then I'm going to go back to work because I felt guilty. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, <clears throat> and so and so that's that's what's driving that. So yes, it's it's been incredible, and and we've been able to create. Um, I've spoken to a lot of people, and I've I've influenced a lot of people, but there's been an impact on me, and an impact on my family, and mm-hmm. and and um, and so. But it's cool because I got this. Uh, but but that's yeah, that's not what I want for me for the rest of my life and so fortunately i've been able to like i say be okay with me now and and now transitioning into finding motivation through contribution as Mm -hmm. opposed to something to make me feel better Mm -hmm. and and i mean this is you know this has been a lifetime journey for me and 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 that is you know i think that's true for everybody like like we it's much easier to, to cover it up than to lean into the pain like it's much easier to you know, it's Friday night in Wellington. It's going to be carnage, um, right? And and so people, that's escapism, right? It's yeah. much easier to go escape than it is to, to lean into and deal with what's actually there. And mm-hmm. and don't get me wrong, I escape too. I'll put on, you know, I'll put on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to just escape. It's mm-hmm. like I've had enough. Let me yeah. escape into that world. And so, um, so I'm just trying to be kind of here now more, mm-hmm. and and lean into what feels uncomfortable. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and then like that racehorse. And then give the racehorse what it needs, as mm. opposed as opposed to uh, kind of whipping it more. Yeah. So I don't know what that means for me in the future. Mm. Um, I don't. I don't know. It's. Um, we'll see. Ask. Ask me next mm. week. I'll have a different answer. Yeah. <laughs> how about you? Do you? How you? I mean, like, you know, you, you, I get the feeling that you're you're fairly masterful at what you do. Mm. Um, and and I get that feeling because uh, and I and I said to you guys beforehand it, it takes a very powerful person to be as soft as you are. I <laughs> think. <laughs> and and so, um, you, so you're obviously masterful in that area area of of life. So you know, how about you? You see these things driving you too, or what? Yes. No. I can. You know, everything where you're saying now, I can see totally on, on myself as well. And even on the beginning, saying about you know that graph about hard work, you know. Yeah. So this week, uh, uh, and for me, it was really unusual. So I, I took a you know few days off, uh, you know, not going to you nice. know to take the class. Yeah. And for me, this you know never happens because I'm constantly. You know, <clears> with how did you feel taking thing. a few days off? Did you feel guilty or did you feel okay? Oh, Oh, man, I think, yeah, in the beginning, yes, a little bit, you know, but um, 
Yeah, but I think it was necessary, you know, it was so important. And I think even to revisit my passion as well mm. for what I do. And because I think if you're too emerge on, on, on that and yeah. constantly, you, you, you start losing sight about what's important, what, what's my reasons of doing that. So I think it, uh, take a step back and for all, the, the, the benefits are, are incredible and, and it's, are so many as well. Mm -hmm. So it's the ability to be able to see more clear what's, what's your needs and what you're doing yeah. and why you're doing that. I think it's super important not to constantly, why am I doing that? And, and, um, Absolutely. And, and also, I think even for the body as well, you know, what I do is very physical. So a little bit of a break gives the, the recovery time. Yeah, <laughs> knocks down the inflammation. Yes, yeah. And, and it's something we neglect quite a lot you know, yeah. because it's constantly... You know, doing, doing, doing. Yeah. Do you guys do much breathing, like Wim Hof stuff and stuff like that? Oh, I, I try. I try to, um, yeah, I try to, at the end of the class, you know, do a little bit of ah, breathing. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. And I constantly, if you if I'm in my class, I'm constantly, guys, take a deep breath to your nose, uh, you know, constantly reminded them. Nice. You know, I even send a text to my students on the middle of the day. Say, hey, nothing, it's nothing. Yeah. Jesus, it's nothing. <laughs> hey, remind yourself of take a deep breath, you know, take a little pause, you know, drink some water, you know, doing those, those things you know because you yeah. go through during the day and and the funniest thing is the distraction became the phone so you think time off it's going to your phone and when yeah. i talk about time off you know it's time off it's time off it's being present to mm -hmm. be able to um see something with the the, the eyes of a beginner you know, of if you're Beautiful. seeing that thing for the first time uh, i think something changed my life a lot when i read something about uh, you know we we see things on the child as a child, and, and after that, everything becomes a memory. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so we see things with that curiosity when we are a child, and after, we forget about that, and, and everything else becomes just a memory of that, you know, and I feel, why not we can create those, those things right now, you know, and by being present? And, yeah. And Presence it, is... Super important. Well, it is, and it's such a good feeling, isn't it? Mm. And um, for me... I think I, I, I kind of think most of the joy in the world is is from being present. Yeah. So like you like like for you when you're on the mat, uh, you, you have to be present, otherwise mm. you're gonna get your ass kicked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I like for me, I like surfing, and 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 I don't surf huge waves, but I surf big enough waves that you know they're double overhead. Mm -hmm. um, that you you have to be present, you know, otherwise you're gonna get hurt. Yeah. And 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 and, and you know, and, and and it's like you're playing a musical instrument. You have to be present. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, I think the the presence is actually and being present to what is is actually what 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 is. That, that that is the joy in the world yeah and and so once you actually know that just try and just i say trying to be present no just being present yeah <laughs> don't try <laughs> just yeah be. yeah uh just being present it actually brings a lot more joy and the interesting thing about that it, it dramatically decreases your stress mm. and so uh, and so we know that most of our stress comes from our mental emotional stress comes from either being in the past or being in the future mm. And so, and so by being more present, it actually decreases your stress, which decreases the, your physiological load on your body, mm -hmm. which makes you healthier. Yeah. <laughs> even, even research is showing, uh, showing as well, if you're, if you're happy, your brain operates 31%, I think, you know, in, yeah. in, in a better... I just saw state, some research yeah. around um, happiness and inflammation. Mm. And, it, and it controls the immune system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's, and so that's for me why, you know, I've, I've, you know, I'm really in, uh, I guess for, uh, 20, how many years, my gosh, 25 plus years, I was very much looking also not only at nutrition, but also the mind, mm -hmm. how does the mind, um, control the physiology because whatever like i said whatever the lighting up in your mind your your pituitary, pituitary gland is responding to that through the hypothalamus and telling your body hormonally you know what you need to survive over the next few seconds mm -hmm. so controlling this controls your physiology yeah and wim hof shows that you know he's they've done yeah. studies where they you know that he's you know injected him with an endotoxin and and his immune response doesn't respond to it because he he's like he can control his immune response. He's basically saying, no, calm down. It's okay. Chill mm -hmm. out. You don't have to worry about it. 
Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. So interesting. So Ben, what's what's your on your studies now with with mental health? You know, what yeah. what, what have you discovered or just confirmed what yeah. your yeah? Your I, I, I can talk about. I'm not allowed to uh, talk about results yet because they've ah, been okay, published, okay. and yeah, yeah. so um, otherwise I'll get a slap on the wrist from Jimmy. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy. Um, and so uh, yeah, so about what I'm studying, I'm studying um, zinc and B6. I'm, well, I'm looking at a urine molecule metabolite that theoretically binds zinc and B6. So people who have more of this molecule they lose more zinc and B6 through their urine, mm. uh, leaving them low in zinc and B6. And zinc and B6 are very, very important for mental health. We, that's already well established. And so what we're doing, we are treating moderate to severe anxiety with high dose um, zinc and B6. And we're using this urine metabolite molecule as a treatment predictor. So people who have more of this molecule should go better with the zinc and B6. Mm-hmm. And um, can't tell you the results at the moment, but it's super exciting. It's mm. like we're we're definitely seeing stuff, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. So I'm I'm really really it's you know, and I guess you know the goal for me would be that in three years time, um, you know, you, you go into you know, anxiety treatments currently from a medication perspective aren't perfect. You know, a lot of, they don't a lot of people don't respond well to them. There's some side effects, um, and and some people don't want to take medications. They want mm-hmm. to take natural substances and so you know i i guess you know already we have um some gps in the country um prescribing zinc and b6 um for anxiety i mean it's very but but theoretically um it'll be three you know in three years time it may be a treatment and we, and we don't know yet right mm-hmm. Just, we got that's why we're doing the research but um but but yeah it's um it's kind of kind of cool to think that we could be shaping and helping a lot of people um, through through just supplying the nutrients their bodies need to build the neurochemistry to feel good. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Mm. And Ben, I, I really like one of your talks as well about, uh, you know, you explained the idea of the holistic kind of, you know, work on the prevention, you know, and the doctors, or yeah. really like, you know, work on the... Can you please talk a little bit? Yeah, for about me, I mean, I'm, I'm not against medications at all. Um, I like medications save lives um i think you what we have in the modern world is uh, modern medicine is brilliant and acute have car accident best place to be but they don't necessarily do as do themselves justice for the for the chronic you know like mm-hmm. ibs crohn's and they're not really i don't think they're doing themselves uh, as justice as, as, as you know and so um so for me with medications i see them as, as short term so if somebody you know somebody comes in with with problems, then you know if if they've got blood work that's out, I will send them to go see their GP to go to go get meds because you don't want say type two diabetes being uncontrolled. It's really damaging to mm-hmm. the body, and so you've got to get it controlled. So the medications for me are to help control the symptomology, um, but then you've got to go looking for the cause. Mm-hmm. What is the cause of this dysfunction in the body? And I'm I'm a believer that there there's a cause for most things. Mm-hmm. I don't think the world is random. I think maybe most people would agree with that. The world yeah. is not random, mm-hmm. and 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 or it appears not to be random at least. Yeah. And and so you know, is, is there a cause? Uh, and so you know, maybe with type two diabetes, maybe the cause is they've been eating too much sugar mm-hmm. or too much grains, mm-hmm. which turn to sugar faster than sugar in yeah. your body. <laughs> and, and, and so, um, or maybe they haven't got enough vitamin D because vitamin D actually controls your ability to make insulin and insulin sensitivity. Mm-hmm. And so you can, you can then start looking at some, some of these causes and, and um, see if you can lower their blood sugar levels by diet and if you can, and, and they get um, you know, back within a healthy range, well, then you can refer them back to their GP to reassess their medication. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's how I look, you know, look at me in the same deal with thyroid, thyroid medication and stuff like that. So, you know, for me, medication is absolutely have their role and, and some people, you know, definitely do need medication and they may need them long-term for what genetic reasons or because of cellular damage. But, um, you know, always sort of looking at, trying to look at what is the cause of it, what is the underlying causal aspect of this issue. And, and often it is um, physiological, you know, often it's coming from the gut, like you mentioned, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, the gut is a, such a huge player um, for mental health and inflammation. Um, and, but, but it could also be coming from trauma, mm-hmm. emotional trauma. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I see, we see a lot of people, we actually know research now shows that, that with IBS, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, yes, it can be caused by pathogenic bacteria in the gut, but you know what? Stress will also cause IBS. 
Mm. Research is very, very clear. Yeah. Stress causes IBS. Well, what's you know stress? Well, that could be trauma. You know, it could be like. Um, she was just talking to one of my clinicians today, and so she's got a um, a client who has Crohn's, which is a very severe um, autoimmune bowel condition. And um, you look at when it started; it, it she lost her daughter, and literally mm. within a matter of weeks of losing her daughter, um, she started getting all the symptomology associated with 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 Crohn's. Mm. Uh, and so, um, yeah, it looks like you know stress was a large part for her. Um, and, and dealing with that trauma. And so, you know, we'll refer her out to psychologists mm -hmm. and uh, to help her deal and work through that. And then we'll also look at um, her gut and the microbiome and look at reestablishing that and look at the, the foods that we can do to help um, reduce that inflammatory picture right now. And, and we'll see how she goes. Mm hmm Ah, that's awesome. So Ben, which, um, for now, at, at the moment, you have this massive discussion about the Plant, plant food based sure. diet and <clears throat> yeah. all, all that. What yeah. what's your views on that and what what type of um, yeah. supplements do you recommend for someone who is going for this plant based because, diet? Yeah. yeah, yeah, because they're gonna they're gonna miss some some things. Absolutely, right? absolutely, mm. yeah. So whenever you cut anything out of your diet, it, well, even if you're eating a really good diet, you're still not going to get everything you need. Mm. Okay, and, and I, that's and that's a fact. Yeah. Because you, you because the, the nutrients aren't in the soil. We're not eating in season. Uh, the, the foods are getting shipped. They're not fresh. All right, uh, and, and so there's a lot of factors: increased stress, increased requirement. And so um, even if you're eating a good diet, I, I would challenge you, like you, unless you're eating beef liver every day, sardines every day seaweed every day and Brazil nuts every day on top of your quinoa salad and your chicken drumsticks and all that jazz, you're not going to be getting everything you need. Mm -hmm. all right? and, and so, uh, and I know that because I've just done enough nutrition analysis of people's diets to know what you've got to eat to get what you need. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's just the minimums, by the way, that's the RDA, the minimum we need. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, so with plant bites, so as soon as you cut out any, anything, you, you, it becomes exponentially harder to get what you need from your diet. So obviously if you, if you're fully plant based, you're going to be, um, you know, B12, it's going to be you know, B12, zinc, and iron are going to be uh, your, your main your main problems. So mm -hmm. you, you're going to have to supplement them and at higher levels. Mm -hmm. right? And so um, yeah, that's that's kind of kind of kind of like a given. So for me, I I'm a big believer that in this genetic uh, spectrum. So let's let's go back and talk about we are the ultimate predator on the planet. Mm. All right, we are the ultimate predator. So we have the the digestive capacity regarding hydrochloric acid of a mountain lion. So theoretically, we can eat raw meat. All right, theoretically. Mm -hmm. um, most people's systems aren't working well enough to do that, so I wouldn't recommend it, but we could mm -hmm. do it. <laughs> um, and, and yet we have the digestive length to break down plant fibers. So we're the ultimate hunting machine. Mm -hmm. We can go along, we can eat plants, we can eat berries, we can eat animals. So, like, that's the full spectrum. That's just, mm. that's just when you look at the physiology. And I, I know people, plant people say, oh, well, but we wouldn't have hydrochloric acid that gets down to a pH of 1.5 if you weren't eating animal proteins. So evolutionary, mm. we've come from eating animal proteins um, as well. Uh, and so, but then you, so that's the first thing. So we, we're, the, we, this broad spectrum of foods we can eat. Um, and then you look at your genetics, where do you come from? So we know that, say, like the Inuit, we're getting 80% of their calories from fats and proteins. They're eating seals and whales, primarily fat, seals and whales. Very, very healthy on their native culture. Some, some tribes of Native American Indians were getting 80% 80, 80 of their calories from buffalo, red meat. Mm. Okay, because they were just following the buffalo around, and that's that what they lived off the buffalo. They mm -hmm. were nomadic up and down through the Midwest of the US. And again, very, very healthy. So these people genetically, do, after doing that for hundreds of years, if not thousands of years, their epigenetic expression is now that they go really well on fats and proteins. Mm -hmm. So these are people who go really well on a ketogenic diet. All right. So I did a study um, oh, 12 years ago, where we, 10, 12 years ago, where we took a group of 28 Maori who genetically are fairly high fat, high protein diet traditionally. So I did my master's thesis on, on Maori diet. And, and, and what we were able to show that we were able to reverse the parameters of type 2 diabetes in 10 weeks using diet alone mm -hmm. by moving them back to their evolutionary diet. Okay. Mm -hmm. no rock it's not rocket science you know we took away four liters of coke a day mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> and gave them some boil up uh, uh, and you know their health improved wow yeah. crazy isn't it <laughs> who would have thought um <laughs> you know and so uh and so anyway so uh and then on the other end of the continuum you've got vegetarian type cultures where where um 
like, like Asian cultures where they have a lot of rice mm. and white rice. And yet when they eat white rice, uh, their microbiome is adapted to that white rice. Their genetics have adapted to that white rice that they don't get high blood sugar levels from eating white rice. Mm. In fact, when they eat white rice, their blood sugar levels are stable and they feel full for a long time. Mm. Whereas genetically, if you so give me white rice, my blood mm. sugar levels are going to spike at 8.5 and I'm going to be starving an hour later after eating $20 worth of sushi. Because <laughs> <laughs> my blood sugar levels have gone up. Yeah. I've got uh, uh, High blood sugar levels are dangerous, so your body releases insulin to drive that sugar into your cells. Mm. Okay, So then if I'm not exercising, it gets driven into fat cells, I then get low blood sugar levels, I'm tired and hungry. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I go eat. And so, you know, so, so it's about stabilizing blood sugar levels. So I have no problem with people being plant-based i would I, d I would love to be able to eat plant-based mm. it would be easy it's much easier mm -hmm. just chuck some things in a blender smoothie drink that and then four hours later do that again wow how like how easy would it be to eat mm, the trouble is pointer. when i do that my blood sugar levels go up they then crash i'm starving hungry i'm grumpy i put on body fat mm. a, a colleague of mine who owns um a company that's one of the largest supplement manufacturers in Australasia for practitioners. Um, he was doing a sort of a, a juicing detox. And, and after a week, he called me. He's like, I've been juicing detox for a week, but I've put on two kilos. What's going on? And I'm like, well, you're, just, you're having too many carbs. Mm, so interesting. It's just unstable yeah. blood sugar levels. You're, just, you're like going like this the whole time. We want stable blood. So for me, I, I go much better on animal proteins. Mm -hmm. I go much and and so don't get me wrong. I love carbs, mm -hmm. uh, but if I eat carbs, I just I only got I only got to smell a muffin and I put on weight. Um, <laughs> I'm very carbohydrate sensitive, uh -huh. and that's most likely genetic and microbiome related. Mm. Okay, so yeah, I'm from Northern European, and so you know, it should go well on fish and 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 these kind of foods. Mm. So for me, um, it's about helping people eat the right foods for them. So how do you do that? What's that look like? Well, you eat whole natural foods that make you stay full the longest. Mm, so interesting. Listen yeah. to your body. So if you have porridge and you're full to one o'clock. Great, eat porridge for breakfast. Mm -hmm. My wife, she's on the carbohydrate side. She can, she goes really well on carbs. She can eat porridge for breakfast and she's four to one o'clock. Mm -hmm. I can have a mixing bowl of porridge at 7.30 and by nine o'clock I am starving. Mm. I like, I'm starving. My body just goes, and I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so it's, it's, it, for me, it's about eating, in, eating the right foods. And then it's also, you know, if you're looking at, at sports, I definitely think uh, there's some pathways like mTOR pathway, where there's these cellular signaling for rebuilding mm -hmm. that, that are dependent on specific levels of amino acids, proteins. Mm -hmm. And so you, it may be difficult to, to trigger these just from plant proteins. So if you're really trying to get that fast recovery, muscle growth, rebuilding response within the body from a physiological aspect, it may be difficult to do that from, um, from just plant proteins. Mm -hmm. However, I'm a huge fan of hemp and hemp mm -hmm. protein. Hemp protein is coming down dramatically in price. And so um, it, it's going to become easier to, to, um, to get this right balance through having plant proteins going forward. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think it's I think it's wonderful that everyone's looking at all of this. Um, so I'm not a vegan or vegetarian. I, I actually mm -hmm. um, I I should eat eat high levels of fat and protein, uh, but I haven't been, and hence I'm six kilos heavier than I want to be. Mm. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's fine. That's life, and you know, yes. yeah, it's, it's okay. <laughs> so, Ben, any crazy diet and <clears throat> kind of you heard off? You said, "Holy, I, this is getting true." Because eating it, it uh, it's very emotional, you know, for mo yeah. most of us, you know. And yeah. So you know, yeah, some yeah. I, there's one mm. really, really crazy diet yeah. that when you stop and think about it, it is it's mind blowing. Mm. And Which it, one? It's called the Western diet. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, seriously, stop and think about this. Like it's of it's course. so under our nose that we don't even see it, and it's yeah. it's so common that we just think it's normal. Mm. But so, you know, like we've got a breakfast aisle in the supermarket. Stop and think about that for a second. A breakfast aisle. Mm. <laughs> who was ever eating that for breakfast oh yeah other than the rolled oats you come around the corner bottom left yeah. the rest of the aisle <laughs> didn't exist it's chemical nutrition yeah yeah I mean it's not that bad it's not as you know it's not 
but that's essentially what it is. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, some of it is chemical nutrition. Uh Um, It's, yeah. And so, honestly, that is the most extreme, crazy diet. So, like, for me, that's just nuts. (laughs) It's just nuts. I love that. (laughs) I mean, people talk about, you know, extreme diets of just eating potatoes. Well, at least they're eating a vegetable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so like for me, the 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 craziest, most extreme diet is the Western diet. Mm, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's that's awesome. So Ben, if you if you could come back, uh, you know, from um, when you're 16 years old when you had the accident, sure, ever, you could give advice to yourself. Wow, what, what advice you'd give to yourself back then? Wow, holy. Um, uh, I would probably just go to India. I'd say go to uh, India. Yeah. Why, why is that? Um, because uh, it's it's very. I think as you get older, um, it's it's challenging to uh, start discovering aspects of yourself as you get mm-hmm. older, mm-hmm. Um, like like a midlife crisis. Right. Okay. okay. And you start dis- discovering and, and questioning meaning in life, and these kind of questions and i think if you could get that done when you're 16 17 18 your life then would be so much more powerful Mm, yeah okay if you if you could actually get to know yourself at at 18 Mm. know who you are and be okay with that then i think whatever you did with your life from then would be beautiful and it would be an expression of contribution and so for me, I just, I, that's, I guess I, I feel I'm getting to that point in my life now. And I just wish I'd got there like 20 something of, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. nearly 30 years ago. So uh, yeah, I, I would have, and I, I, and I say go to India. I've never even been to India, so I don't know what's in India, uh, but, but people, you know, it's something they say, go to India, right? Yeah, yeah, and, you know, yeah. so what I'm talking about is, is, you know, you've got to try and find yourself and, mm-hmm. and whatever tool that is. And, you know, maybe you know, obviously this path that I have led has, has led me to me. And so I'm thankful for that. Mm-hmm. But geez, it would be nice if I didn't have to wait 28 years for it. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and That's so, uh, and so, yeah, it it would it would have been like go find yourself. Which you know, what does that mean? Um, mm. You know, pe- people used you, you, you to say that to me. I remember somebody saying that to me, like. I don't know how many 14 years ago. She was like, Ben, you're such a powerful being. You just need to get centered. <laughs> like. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> How can I not be centered? Uh-huh. But but now I get it. I actually get it. Like I I, I actually get it. I was like yeah, yeah. I was over there with other, other people worrying about what other people were thinking. I was over there doing stuff because of other people, like you said. Mm-hmm. I wasn't here just standing in my space, going, "Well, this this is me," and you know. And you know, I, I, I have food juice sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Ice blocks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a clinical nutritionist who eats food juice. Yeah. <laughs> and the odd croissant. Yeah. Uh, me too. I love that. <laughs> so, Ben, um, three, three most influential books. I know this is such a hard question, but. Yeah, it is. Um, it is. Uh, I, I can only do them kind of based on now, if that's uh-huh. a, if yeah, that's yeah. that's okay. Uh-huh. So um, the first one would be Michael Singer, the Surrender Experiment, mm. and so for me, that's that's really helped me over the last year in my life. Um, so just to uh, the, the the premise of that is just to surrender to what is, surrender mm. to what the universe is bringing, and and go with that. Mm-hmm. And that's it's been a, a challenging time for me in my life the last year because we've had a capital raise. We've, we've we're incredibly successful capital raise where we've raised a couple of million dollars for the business to take us to the next level. Mm-hmm. We've got sort of um, 300 customers slash shareholders now who, who I want to have the company be successful for. So mm-hmm. there's it, it, it a lot of pressure. Mm. And, um, and so, you know, just being okay with that is, 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 and so surrendering to that's how it is is fine, and mm-hmm. so that's been useful. Um, Silence of the Heart by Rob, Robert Adams. So Silence of the Heart is a, is pretty is a book that it's a spiritual text mm-hmm. um, by a, an American guy, and he uh, yeah I'm gonna can I couldn't tell a story. It's, it's, mm. it, I, I yeah, yeah please, yeah, yeah, story, yeah, of but, course. Uh, yeah. So Robert Adams was um, <clears throat> he was an American guy, and when he was a kid, up to the age of about six. Um, he used to have a vision of this little bearded guy talk gibberish to him, sit on the end of his bed and talk gibberish to him. 
since he was six years old, up to the age of six, and he'd just sit there and just talk gibberish to him. And then he disappeared as he got older. And, um, and then when he was like 15 or 16, he was doing a maths exam at school and he spontaneously became enlightened. Mm. So he, uh, and so he, he literally got up and left the math exam, you know, enlightened. You know, what does that mean? I don't know. That's beyond my mind. Mm. Um, but and so he went to uh, he decided he wanted to go to India. That's mm -hmm. why I said to go to India. Um, and and so he, he and he, he actually um, saw um, Paramahansa Yogananda, who wrote autobiography of a yogi. So very very uh, famous yogi and he, and he was like I'm not your master you need to keep going and anyway he kept going and he he, he ended up at Arancula and I hope I hope I'm getting this story right um, but don't let the truth get in the way of a good story they say yeah. <laughs> um, and so uh, and so anyway he's in Arancula and so uh, and there's a market there and he looks down a side street and there's this little guy who when he was six years old used to sit at the end of bed and talk to him mm. And and it turns out to be Sri Ram Rama I can't say his name Sri Ram Maharshi, mm. um, and he goes I've been waiting for you, wow. And and so it was his guru, and so he stayed with him the last two years of his life. Mm -hmm. And so uh, so Robert Adams is 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 this American guy, mm -hmm. and so he he wrote a book called Silence of the Heart, which is really just some of his teachings. And so for about ten years I would uh, I for, for about ten years I've just I read that book every night for about ten years. Wow. That's and so I've just been doing yeah. laps. I just reread it. I've read it you know, however mm -hmm. many times, but it's the sort of book that you read a paragraph, and the paragraph actually don't you don't even read a paragraph. You read a sentence, mm. and the sentence just blows your mind. Mm -hmm. and then you have to sit there and go and try and comprehend that sentence for until you fall asleep yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah that would be um that would be another another uh really really great book and so then the, the third book third book would be um probably i think you're gonna laugh mm. is, is is a book i think it's called rose and it's I think it's by Holly Hunter, mm. and it's 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 a, a book that I read to my nine year old and my eight year old. Mm. Maybe she's uh, she's about nine now, uh -huh. but it's it's a, it's like I, I think it's Holly Hunter. We may have to check that. Uh -huh. um, uh, <laughs> may have to check that, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but but anyway, it's it's a children's book about Venice and magic, and so I read I, you know since she was maybe old enough for me to read to her and she's enjoyed these stories so i, I read I, I read read those books to her and so for me they're magical when i pick them up and, and we read them together you know bedtime um so please tell a little bit about the story of this book oh yeah so it's, it's there's there's a whole series of them and and it's basically um it's based in venice mm. and they have there's it's um certain people in in the in in the city have magic Mm -hmm. And there's all, and and it's just story about like you know an, an orphan who who doesn't know she has magic, and and so she starts working as a maid in a in a house um, that that the the uh, who's a famous magician, and so she's just a maid in this famous magician's house. And anyway, so things tra things transpire that um, it turns out that she's really good at magic, and and she you know she saves the whole house, and she saves um, children start getting abducted by by an evil magician or uh, by a witch. And um, and she she you know she she's able to use her magic to save them and then of course you know he takes her on as a, an apprentice so it's, this is a spoiler alert here um, uh. <laughs> <laughs> block your ears if you're going to read the book um, and so he takes her on as an apprentice uh. and and you know she gets to be taught magic and live in this lovely house mm. so it's you know from rags to riches sort of story and it's just it's just beautiful. Hollywood. Holly Webb. Holly Webb. <laughs> Holly Webb. Thank you. Carla, Carla. Yeah, thank I you. Love That's it. awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so those are really, uh, my three top books right now. That's awesome. I love it. So, Ben, no, thank you so much. It has been such a pleasure, such a refreshing have you here. You know, such a you know, powerful human being, but super kind, you know, so open. Yeah, well, I feel That's like I know you for uh, you know, for years. Likewise. You know, yeah. I have been looking forward to this. Um, like like I said, as soon as we organized, you know, to come on the show, I, you know, I've been listening to a lot of, you know, a lot of your podcasts and shows and, and uh, you know, you, you're my, like I said, you, 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 you're my favorite show right now is you and Joe Rogan. That's uh, it. I think, wow. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, I think uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be one of the early guys on your show because uh, you keep doing what you're doing <laughs> it will be you and joe rogan <laughs> oh thank you thank you so much yeah you're and welcome. you know 
keep doing what you're doing. It's really, and, and again, you know, I'll never take anything put on my body if I don't trust, you know, and, and see the work you're doing. Yeah. And now, you know, even more, you know, I'm definitely going to be, you know, advocate yeah. for for the brand because, you know, it's something I believe as Thanks, well. Thanks, man. So. Yeah, thanks. And uh, I mean, we we just try and make as good a products as we can. Mm. That's what you like this. Like, like for me, these are products that I want to take. I just want to make as good a products as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the premise we come from. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, thanks for thanks for having me on. And it's it's been a real honor and pleasure. Thanks, Carlin. So thanks, Carlin. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Man. All the best. <laughs>